So, why is Thoth in the near earth? <laughs> what does his representation there mean? And not only Thoth, but the other the luminaries, the beings that will be present there, are present there. What is their role? They don't originate in the near earth. But they are going to be there to help guide us. They're not going to be our leaders. They aren't going to be separate religions or form religions around them. Yeshua will be there, Buddha, all of these master beings, Thoth, Osiris, Isis. We call them these names, of course, that we're speaking of their souls, which are far beyond the identities and personalities they have brought to us in this particular um, earth dynamic that we live in now. And they will have their temples, which are not bricks and stone, although some of them may have edifices attached to them. They are not a place where someone goes to worship them or uh, goes to follow a specific doctrine of any kind. So why are there separate entities there that are forming their own circles of consciousness there? Well, first of all, as I've said before, and Thoth has stressed to me, the New Earth consciousness domain is not... It's, it's still... Um, <laughs> I always have the trouble finding the word for it. Uh, <clears throat> it has polarity and you know it, it is not the oneness that we think the absolute is going to be and actually the absolute is that oneness that we have hold in our hearts and minds but there is duality in the new earth because duality is not a bad thing it's not a lower thing it is a process and a process that has a purpose it's just that in this world we have really not gotten that idea right and we have not used duality in the balanced way it should be employed in our experience and in our world we've really abused it and that abuse started so early on that we had, it has become the normal duality to us. Like, ooh, duality. We don't want that because look how bad it is. But duality can be a very beautiful thing. It's, it's a tool. And in the new earth, we're going to learn how to use that tool. And I say learn because we're not going to just come full blown into the experience and go, oh, I've got it now. I know how to do this. There is a learning process. Yes, we'll be more awakened, more aware, but there's a development, still an evolution, still a learning process, and that's why Thoth calls this first stage of the new earth, Numisome, he gives it a name, because it's a stage of learning. And this may, learning stage may last a long time. Of course, time is different there. 
And so these beings that we call masters or luminaries or whatever will support us there. And they will be able to do so in a far more direct and up close and personal way. Because we will be in an atmosphere, a vibration that is more attuned to theirs. They will provide us with an energy experience, an energy experience, an experience of their presence. Because these beings exude a presence that says it all. It, it envelops you, it, it uplifts you, it gives you a sense of what it's like to live in that kind of frequency. So we will already be in a much more evolved frequency of experience but the beings are even higher than that uh, I use the term higher which is kind of a juvenile word but that's the only one I have at the moment and so they will offer us an experience of that vibration of that lifestyle if you will to live in that energy and it will be easier for us to assume it because we'll have a, a fresh brand new platform of a higher frequency that has no old history to it. Now we may have had some of that clean to us a little bit when we first land, so to speak, but um, we won't have the planet won't have absor absorbed that frequency. See, when when we leave this plane of Earth. We're not really going anywhere. We're exchanging it right in the space that we are because it's not like you travel anywhere. But the but when we step out of it, the earth as we know it will fall away. It will disintegrate. It will explode. I don't know what is going to happen exactly, but it's not going to be here anymore. And what we take with us that makes it a new earth and not just a new planet like some other world, it's a new earth, is the planetary genius at the center of the planet that records all that is of us and our evolution and our world that is the earth. It is Gaia herself programmed into the planetary genius and we take that with us. But we do not take with us the parts that are the old programs that failed us or that are no longer useful to us because we don't need that in our new experience. We're only taking the parts that are our heart of hearts, that are what Earth is truly about, why we love it so, despite everything. So when we stand before the Masters, or whatever you want to call them. I really don't like the name Masters, and I tend to use it anyway, so I guess that's some kind of old programming in me. When we stand before the Illuminaries, as Thoth prefers to call it, because illumination is something we can all share, we are present with them without any of the trappings that hold us down, that bear weight upon our energy, our bodies, our minds, and even to some degree our souls as the incarnated force field that we are in. All of that is lifted. Yes, we're still in a, in a, a world atmosphere. We are in a planet, an earthen, it's earth in a new form, and we're in a duality system, but a highly subtle revised duality system as it was intended to be, as it was actually once before on this earth. And so we are able to be present with them in a way that we cannot be here, no, despite all the meditation, all the right foods, all the good thoughts, all the positive energy we pump into ourselves all the time. All of this is going on that we try so hard to reach that place. And yes, a few people on this planet do, despite it all. But most of us don't. We get somewhere. I'm not saying we don't. But we don't get there where we're trying to be. 
And in the New Earth situation, we do get there. We are where we're trying to be because we're not weighted down with all the leaden past. We have a new program of light and one that speaks of the true intentions of our original program of light. And so, we can sit there in our world, stand there in our world, be there in our world of the new earth, and the masters will be on the shore. They won't do everything for us. They don't. That's not the way it works, and we all know that. But they will be there for us in a more present way, not because we did something good to get their favor, but because we simply shifted our vibration so that we could meet them in that place. They have limitations, too, and their limitations are that they abide by universal law in a very enlightened way. They don't step out of the field and try to mess with our own experience and our own evolution. That's not the way it works. And when we try to do that in our world with other people in our experience, it doesn't work either. <laughs> but we find out the hard way. And there's another thing that Thoth wishes me to stress here, and I've stressed it before, but always when I speak about being in the new earth and how wonderful it is and all the experiences, it's really important to bring, us, bring this back to home. And that is that we're not talking about the future because time is something we've kind of consensually, as Thoth says, it's a consensual arrangement that we have here. When we step out of that envelope of consensual arrangement, there is no time. That means the new earth is now. And how do we bring that into a greater focus? If we think, oh, well, Maya is saying and these others saying, we're going to be on this new earth. It's going to be wonderful. When we finally reach that point, when we get there, we're just shoving it further and further away from us. It's here now. The kingdom of God is within as someone once said a little over a thousand years ago. And that is where we're going to find the new earth. Yes, I do believe, or at least as much as I can believe in anything, that what Thoth tells me about the physical planetary ascension and the stages and all of this and the pyramidus radius and all of this is in our quote-unquote future. But that future is now. And if we can live our lives now, not in the future, but now, embracing all that is, to some extent. I mean, that's a big, big, you know, that's a, a big thing to think about. It's not something you can just snap your fingers and do, perhaps. But I'm not saying that we have to perfect it. I'm just saying that we need to consider it, at least. And we need to be mindful of it all the time. You know, every day think, I'm not just living in the moment that I can see and perceive. I'm living in all the moments. In my past, my future, everywhere. And I'm taking out of those moments what I choose to embrace. And I'm just letting the rest float away, drift away in the tide. And that is what makes the new earth the new earth. It's new because we are seeing it with new eyes, new hearts, and new minds. And despite all the linear steps we will go through as a human race to arrive there, that is only what we are perceiving in our linear time. Again, we are already there. It's really more than our minds can accept. Or we, can, we can rationalize it as new age or spiritually you know, active beings that we are and 
the focus is that we offer, you know, we open to in our souls, and this is all good. But we, it's okay to recognize that our minds can simply not grasp that on the higher dimensions. That doesn't mean it's a limitation, because our hearts abide there in the true sense of the heart frequency. It abides there. And when you allow your heart mind to bring it into your expressive field of resonance and of everyday life, then you are experiencing in some way, in some good way, that truth. So now let us discuss how it kind of works in the new earth in regard to being there and experiencing others and all of these things. I think I got off the subject just a little bit when I was saying why the masters, not the masters, <laughs> I'm stuck on that word, why the illuminaries have their different temples or spheres of illumination for us. I started out about duality being a really a good thing, and then I got kind of got, went off into some other paths. So let me get back and focus on that. We have been raised, this whole planet of humanity, in the last, you know, since a long time ago, to feel that individual beings that have a lot of light and energy, and they're, they're speaking or teaching or, you know, giving you information that you resonate with that this is some kind of a religion and you have to be loyal to that or have to be you know secular to that and it has become that way i mean in the sense that that's what is expected of you by most of the quote unquote religions of the world or leaders or spiritual people that talk and say things to you that you resonate with. But actually, and more and more this is becoming to be true, those who stand up and speak in this way are not asking you to follow them, are not asking you to, um, you know, as a leader or something, or a guru. Um, the age of guru had its place, gurus, and they're still around, I guess, but really... Uh, we're moving outside of that envelope now. And the illuminaries in the new earth are there on a one-to-one -one basis with you in many ways. And they are there for your fields of resonance to find a place that you can enter the fuller, the greater picture. Because remember, this Numus Ohm level is where we are getting adjusted to the field of the new earth. And we have been attuned to and with certain illuminary souls for eons of our incarnational spans. We may be attracted to several ones, but there's usually one that is like there for us. And maybe you, you don't even consciously know it in this lifetime, but you have some energy resonance with a particular path. And it's not the soul, necessarily. Well, it's not the soul. In other words, I, I don't have... I may have had a lot of lifetimes with both, with both soul and whatever, and that's good and fine. But that's not why I'm so attuned and resonant with the both extreme. See, that's an intelligent stream that this ultra being is able to hold in its body experience being and translate it through time in various incarnational ways. It's the stream that you're attracted to, not the persona, not the individual of the soul. And that stream is a particular vibration that helps your soul to realize the fullness of all. Now when you develop, your soul develops to a pet place where no individual stream 
attracts you more than any other individual stream. In fact, the streams all become one in your experience. Well, then you've reached the point where individual master beings are simply friends of yours who have a lot to say that, or not a lot to say, I should put it that way. Sometimes I speak so juvenilely about these things, um, who are, you know, present and you would, you appreciate that presence and you want to be around it to some degree. Like you have friends that are like that for you, you know, but it's not what it is where, oh my gosh, they're in a luminary. Ooh, I want to be in their presence. So what they're doing is they're there to help you get to that point through the resonance that you feel for them and they're streaming. And they, they give you that presence and they fill you up with it and then they, you're allowed to move into another, another and you just move through the whole experience until you're just a full cup of all those experiences of beings. And that's why they are facilitating it the way they are. And in fact, even in our astral worlds of Earth as it is now, the astral worlds that are connected to us now of Earth, master beings or illumined beings show up there, you know. And and people say, oh, I had an experience with Jesus. Or, you know, I, I, I went through the tunnel and there was Jesus or there was Buddha or whatever. You know, and they had this experience and then they come back to tell it. Well, if they'd gone on, they would have been with that being to a certain period of time. That being would have helped them along. The difference is, is that you keep coming back to the sphere. You keep coming back to this platform, this baseline, and you have to do it all over again. In the New Earth experience, the baseline is not one where you lose consciousness. You have to go back into this chaotic, fleshy, karmic experience. You still are evolving, in, but you're not going through that uh, forgetfulness, that amnesia, that confusion of birth and being raised as a little child and having to wait till you grow up and learn stuff all over again. And You know, it's just not there. So you're free from all of that. And in that way, because you're free to do more, you you don't lose what you've gained. <laughs> you know, you just move on and on and on and on in that perception. And they're there to help you do that. But they're not there to hope form their own little cliques. Believe me, that's not at all what it's about. And yet they are there in their personas that you recognize at first so that you can be helped along the way to go beyond that. One other thing I wanted to bring up here is how, the, again, the system works. In, in the New Earth experience, your soul is its own quantum field completely. I mean, really, it is here, too, but you're just not aware of it. It's just too all mixed up and confused, and you've got all this other stuff going on. But there, you're really in touch with your own quantum field. And that means that you could be walking along a beautiful path in this beautiful nature environment of the new earth. And someone else is walking down that path and comes to, you know, from the other direction. And there the two of you are face to face. Well, if that other person has a resonance with your field and you have a resonance with theirs, even if you don't know them in this particular habitat, you will see one another, you will greet one another, you will share your quantum fields to some degree. Not mush them together, but you know, there's a sharing, an experiential sharing. But if you do not have that much resonance with that particular being, that doesn't mean you're, you're, you have uh, negative thing, feelings or energies going on, because that doesn't, that's not really occurring in the New Earth on the level we understand that. But there's just not a, yet a, a true, you know, identity resonance. You won't see each other. You won't experience each other. You won't, you, you just won't be there for that other person and, and they won't be there for you. You'll just have, you're in your own quantum field. They're in their quantum field. And if they choose and you choose not to, you know, to, to touch each other's quantum field, so to speak, well, you're just not going to. 
That's why when I flew over the New York at that time, I didn't see any people. Of course, I was experiencing it from my field of resonance, and I was experiencing my own picture of it. We have to bear that in mind, about the houses and everything I saw. But you're not going to see a bunch of people walking around all over the place in your quantum field. You know, you're only going to see those that you need to be seeing, that you're resonating with, and they're resonating with you, that you can learn the most with communion and being oneness with them. And as you develop your ability to feel resonant with more individuals, and they develop their resonance the same way, more individuals are going to show up in your quantum field, you know. And, and maybe even, it doesn't even, it doesn't even end there. Let's say you have another person, you're very, you have very resonant with this other person, okay? And they're very resonant with you, like brothers, sister, family, you know, really resonant. And you're walking down this path and you, you know, come, and they're coming from the opposite direction. But let's say you're just not in a place right then that you need to make that connection. It's like, there's a reason why you just need to be in your own space. Well, you will be in your own space. You will see them then because you're just not open to that resonant connection. It's like you don't hear the phone ring and you know it's your pal, you know, on the phone, but gosh, you just don't feel like answering. You'll talk to them later, okay? So you don't answer the phone. Kind of the same thing. And this really helps weed out, shall we say, distraction. And taking you down paths that are not necessary for you at the time. Now, it's not just a selfish thing because let's say you're walking down the path, your friend's walking down the path, and they really need connection with you. And you feel that it's a resonant thing for you to do. Well, then those fields will meet. So you see, there's all different kinds of situations that will cause the meeting ground or not meeting in that Feel because you're in your own membrane. They're in their own membrane, within a membrane, within a membrane. 